Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Baltimore. A few weeks ago, we aired an interview with Gregory Wilpert about inflation in Venezuela. We talked about why Greg thought there was inflation and what should be done about it. We got a fair number of emails disagreeing with Greg, and one of those emails came from John Weeks, who's a regular guest on The Real News. He agreed with some of Greg's thesis, but not all of it, and suggested another reason why inflation might be so rampant in Venezuela. There are various competing theories about all of this, but there seems to be a few major ones, the major ones being why there is so much inflation. And the main arguments go like this. First of all, too much aggregate demand. Second, problems with the exchange rates. Third, economic sabotage and hoarding. Fourth, central bank liquidity. Too much money being created, too much money supply. Reuters reports that bankers and business owners are complaining it costs too much and it's too difficult to get dollars to buy items for import to Venezuela. The government is saying, as I suggested, that it's an actual conspiracy, deliberate hoarding to create shortages, which is driving up prices. So we're going to talk about all of this with Mr. Weeks and Mr. Wilpert, and now joining us from London is John Weeks. John is a professor emeritus of the University of London and author of the new book, The Economics of the One Percent, How Mainstream Economics Serves the Rich, Obscures Reality, and Distorts Policy. And also joining us from New York at the moment, although he's heading for Venezuela, I think in a matter of days, is Gregory Wilpert. He's the founder of VenezuelaAnalysis.com, author of the book Venezuela, Changing Venezuela by Taking Power, the history and policies of the Chavez government, and he's about to become, or by the time you see this, he has, will have become, the new director of Telesur English. Thank you both for joining us. Thank, Thank you for him. So, Greg, can, can you kick us off? Uh, give us your basic argument uh, why you think there's something like 56% annualized inflation, at least that's what it was in 2013. Uh, this year it seems almost as bad, maybe it's somewhere in the 40s. One way or the other, the inflation rate is, is, is very high and higher than many other Latin American countries um, and uh, is, is considered by most one of the underlying causes or reasons for the social unrest that's going on in Venezuela now. Um, so kick us off, why is inflation so high in Venezuela? Well, of the different explanations that you offered in your introduction, I would have actually said something in the short version, all of the above. Uh, but let me break it down very quickly. I mean, I think there are two main uh, issues in the Venezuelan economy. One is more structural and the other is circumstantial. You know, the structural element is that Venezuela is an oil producing economy. And what this has meant is that um, it receives lots of petrodollars flooding the economy, which tend to raise prices in general, because uh, this, this money comes into the economy and basically raises uh, the money supply in the country and uh, tends to make everything as a result more expensive. So that's one element that contributes to inflation. Uh, that's the structural element. And then there's a circumstantial element. I mean, the, the, the structural one has been around ever since Venezuela became an oil producing country. Uh, and different governments have dealt with this problem in different ways, sometimes successfully, sometimes unsuccessfully. This, the circumstantial elements, there are really three. This first one is um, that the government of um, uh, Hugo Chavez uh, decided to pursue uh, a socialist uh, path. And what that meant basically was... Uh, Greg, the Greg, can I interrupt you for one sec? Be before we move on to just one uh, the other points, I just want to ask you, why do other oil economies not have the same problem? For example, Saudi Arabia, I, I think last month had a, had an annualized rate of something like 2.9 percent. I mean, very low inflation. I think there's a variety of explanations for why other oil producing countries have low inflation. One of them being that uh, instead of uh, taking the oil money into their country, uh, they keep it outside in sovereign wealth funds. That's a very important measure that many oil producing countries use. As a matter of fact, the sovereign wealth funds of Norway and Saudi Arabia are some of the largest funds in the world. Um, so that's, that makes a huge difference. Uh, another difference, of course, would be if you simply import everything that you need and therefore adjust the uh, number of goods to the number, uh, the, the amount of demand within the country, and therefore that creates some stability. For various reasons, Venezuela wants to industrialize, and uh, therefore places restrictions to some extent on imports, and um, that then you know, and if you don't have a corresponding domestic product increase in production, that will also produce inflation because you have more money chasing fewer goods. Okay. 
go up. Uh, John, we, you can help. Well, let me quickly, before you move on, John, do you want to get in on this part of the argument before Greg moves to his next stage? Well, there's some parts I agree with, but uh, uh, I don't think um, inflation is caused by excess money supply. I think the, the money supply, well, I got to be careful not to use uh, um, um, Well, know, hold on. Hold, we're I talking right now. Just I mean to, is, hang hang no, on, John, just on this question of whether it has to do with oil and being an oil economy. We'll move into these other issues later, but do you have something you want to say about that because Venezuela relies on all this oil money, that that's kind of necessarily uh, inflationary? Uh, I, I think also oil, oil exporting countries tend to have low inflation because they usually have a strong balance of payments position. And as a result, they tend to have stable exchange rates. That tends to lead to a stable price level. Okay, so move on, Greg, and then, John, you'll get a chance to make a more comprehensive argument. Well, then the circumstantial uh, elements, I think, are three. There's, uh, first of all, the Chavez government's pursuit of socialism, which produced a reaction in the country's upper class and old elite uh, to pursue a path of political destabilization, which led to the 2002 coup attempt against Chavez, and which also led to massive capital flight. And um, the, the capital flight uh, basically uh, lowered the value of the currency, and uh, that uh, further uh, contributed to inflation in Venezuela because uh, the imports that Venezuela was relying on started to get more expensive. Uh, Venezuela tried to control the situation with a uh, currency exchange uh, control. Uh, which it introduced in March of 2003, and that stabilized the situation for a while. As a matter of fact, inflation dropped down to uh, uh, to a fairly low and stable level, and uh, you had a period of, uh, of very strong economic growth from 2004 to 2008. The second element, though, was the 2008 uh, global economic crisis, which uh, for Venezuela hit in the form of the, a drop in the uh, price of oil, which meant that fewer uh, dollars uh, were available for imports and uh, for uh, the currency control. And so Venezuela started to borrow money instead of uh, paying for it uh, for the uh, imports with, uh, with its, uh, 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 its uh, foreign currency reserves. And so that increased uh, actually also contributed towards, uh, because it, uh, people could buy dollars, borrow dollars with bolivars, that was part of the currency control, that further increased the money supply. So that's the second element, the global economic crisis. And then the third element, which hit really in, uh, in last year, early last year, was Chavez's death. And this is where the element of further political stabilization comes in. Uh, where That's why I said earlier that it was all of the above in the sense that and this is uh, that we can, we do know that many of the private companies in Venezuela have engaged in practices of hoarding and overpricing their products and actually uh, cheating the government by importing stuff and uh, and then smuggling it right back out of the country uh, in order to uh, take advantage of the favorable exchange rate and taking advantage of, of the big difference that has been created between the official exchange rate and the black market exchange Just rate. Just quickly, how does that work? How does someone bring something in and send it out again and make money? Well, you apply for uh, dollars at the official exchange rate. Let's say you buy um, <clears throat> one dollar uh, with six bolivars, uh, claiming that you're going to import one dollar worth of uh, goods, and uh, maybe you import them, maybe you don't. But if you do import them, uh, that one dollar's worth, uh, then uh, instead of selling that one dollar's worth in Venezuela for six bolivars, you either uh, sell it for a lot more, or you export it again, uh, smuggling it out of the country and selling it uh, for the dollar that you originally bought it for, and then exchanging the dollar in the black market for 60 or 70 bolivars within Venezuela. And so you made a tenfold profit turning six bolivars into 60 or 70 bolivars. So I just want to make sure I have this right, Greg. So in terms of the fundamental but not only cause of inflation, you're saying the driving force is capital flight, that is rich people taking dollars and getting them to Florida or wherever, but getting them out of the country and two deliberate attempts to destabilize the economy. Do I have that right? Yes, although one needs to qualify the issue of capital flight in terms of how that is done. And uh, it's, it's really the mechanism of buying the dollars at the official exchange rate and then either not using for imports or smuggling those imports right back out of the country. Okay. 
All right, John, uh, what's your take uh, in terms of what you agree or don't agree with Greg, and what do you think is the driving driving force? I, I'm assuming you probably agree with the all of the above theory as well. I guess what we're arguing about is what's the driving force. Yeah, I think that's true. I mean, the first point I would make is that um, Venezuela is a um, progressive government, a um, uh, transforming the, the economy, and it's a democracy. Uh, and uh, so as a result, you have a government that has to deal with different interests. This is not a dictatorship. This is not a one-party state. This is a democratic country which is trying to pursue progressive policies. Now, when that happens, external forces and internal forces, reactionary forces, are going to try to destabilize you. You have to be prepared for that. Okay, then you have to look at it and say, what can you do about it? Okay, with that introduction, I'll say, this is my take on it. One, the problem is not the money supply. That is, inflation generates increases in money, not the other way around. That's the first point I would make. What, what causes inflation then? Continuous sustained excess demand. What that means is a expenditure potential which is larger than the supply available in the economy. There are only two ways for the economy to adjust to that. In that sense, inflation is a disequilibrium or an uh, imbalance. There are only two ways that that balance can be corrected are eliminated, not corrected. And one is prices go up, which eliminates the excess demand through <coughs> reducing people's purchasing power or through imports. Okay, you have excess demand, you, you sell them through imports. Now, progressive governments tend to oversee inflation. Okay, hold on yeah. for John. John, yeah. break that down for a sec. Why, why would imports lower inflation? Well, if, if, the, if the inflation is a result of purchasing power exceeding the supply of commodities that are available domestically, then that problem is resolved, can be resolved through importing more. Okay. So instead of prices going up for wheat or for automobiles or whatever it happens to be, a, a basic or, or luxury, instead of prices going up, you import them to fill the demand gap. Right. Okay. If, if the government then begins to develop a imbalance in, that is, it is importing at a rate which is not sustainable, if it is in that situation, then it begins to restrain imports and inflation becomes the only way to resolve this disequilibrium between aggregate demand and supply of, uh, uh, of commodities. I mean prices keep going up. Right. Okay, now, what do you do about it? Why, first we might okay, ask, hang, why hang, does hang it on, happen? Hang on, before, before you go there, uh, Greg, what do you make of that as the cause of inflation? How does that compare with what you've been saying? Well, I think that, that all sounds uh, makes perfect sense to me. I mean, the only thing I guess is uh, about the uh, increasing money supply. Of course, uh, the, the money, increasing money supply has been going to uh, the most of the country's uh, population through the social programs, and therefore it has been increasing uh, demand. Now, of course, uh, the question is where does this uh, increasing money supply? Or what is the effect of that? Of course, it could be going into savings, in which case it wouldn't uh, be increasing inflation. But in Venezuela, it goes towards spending. And part of the reason it goes to spending is because there's already kind of a cycle of inflation generated where people feel like they can uh, keep the wealth, as the, keep their, the, the value of their money better if they spend it rather than if they keep it in the bank. Why, why, why is the money supply growing so quickly? Apparently 3.2% increase in money supply just in the month of January alone. What I think, Paul, is this. I think that increases in the money supply are the result of spending. That is, that is to say, the money supply is endogenous, if I can use that word. The money supply is the result of expenditure. It is not the cause of expenditure. But I think there's a bigger question here. No, but, back, but back up. Whose expenditure? Because, I mean, what, what I'm... Well, it's the government's expenditure. Yeah, exactly. So what I'm saying, instead of them using foreign reserves or taxing people to pay 
increasing taxes to pay for these social programs, they're increasing the money supply to pay for the programs. Yes, now, I would like to make a general point about that because if you look at Argentina, it is suffering from rather, relatively high inflation also. <clears throat> Not as high as Venezuela, but it's suffering from relatively high inflation. And a country where I was just working with the central bank in Africa, Zambia, same thing. These are progressive governments. Bolivia is the exception. We can come to that if you want to. Okay, why does this happen? It's not happening in Colombia. It's not happening, you know, in these reactionary places. So why does it happen in progressive countries? Okay, it's John, quite... John, John, this yeah. is what we call a cliffhanger. You're going to have to come back for part two to find out the answer to that why, because this episode is getting around the time we think it should get to on the web. So okay. join us for part two, which you will see tomorrow. And John will answer the question, why is it so high in Venezuela and a few of these other countries, but especially what to do about it. So please join us for the next segment of our discussion, debate about why is inflation so high in Venezuela and what to do about it on The Real News Network.